as we cast an analytical lens over the shifting dynamics of China's automotive market, a dramatic change of an unprecedented scale comes to light. During its peak in 2017, both the Chinese economy and the fossil fuel vehicle industry reached a soaring high in sales. However, an unexpected fall from grace followed, evidenced by a peculiar downturn in automotive sales in 2018. Presenting a negative growth for the first time in two decades. At the initial stage of the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, due to people's concerns about public transportation, there was a brief surge in the market for gasoline cars. However, this did not manage to reserve the overall downward trend in the gasoline car market. By 2022, China's automotive market was still grappling with a sustained slump. A steady decline in consumer buying power and demand further exacerbated the weakening car sales. Data from SAIC Motor presented a stark contrast with a plunge of 72% and 71% respectively in May year-over-year year sales compared to 2021 for market dominators SAIC Volkswagen and SAIC General Motors. As we trend into 2023, electric vehicle giant Tesla initiated a global price reduction campaign, a unique collaboration in March between the Hubei provincial government and a brand under Dongfen Motors, led to a subsidy policy that sparked an industry-wide price war. A report by finance law website WoshipM.com revealed that in excess of 50 car brands and hundreds of models engaged in the price war, leading to price drop of up to 40% in some models. However, the first five months of the year saw no notable increase in vehicle sales, as per fossil fuel car company data, which reported a staggering 80% drop in sales compared to the 2017 peak. The continued decrease of fossil fuel vehicle sales has resulted in a progressive income shrinkage for traditional sales channels. The notable high cost for S stores, referring to auto dealership authorized by a manufacturer to engage in the four business relating to sales, spare parts, service, and survey. Numerous stores are experiencing an imbalance between income and expenditure, with the most severely affected forced to shut their doors. The data reveals a bleak picture. Over 1,900 4S stores closed in 2021, and this figure surged to 4,000 by 2022. An overwhelming majority of 4S stores are operating at a loss, making their operational conditions the worst in a decade. To put this into perspective, an average of 11 4S stores are closing every day. The landscape turned bleaker still by 2023. An estimated 55% of car dealership groups teetered on the edge of bankruptcy or incurred severe losses, with less than 20% managing to turn a profit. Owing to the year-over-year -year decline in overall sales volume of fossil fuel vehicles, the first two months of this year saw a drop of 22.8% and 20% respectively in sales. Pangda Group, formerly a titan in automotive sales with a peak network of over 1,400 stores, experienced a significant downfall. By the close of 2022, due to a critical lack of liquid capital and inability to meet due debts, a massive reduction in its dealership network occurred, leaving only 267 surviving stores, a mere 20% of its former glory. Under these difficult circumstances, on June 30th of this year, Panda Group was forced to delist from the Shanghai Stock Exchange, where it had been stationed for a 12-year stretch. As fossil fuel vehicles sale continued on a downward spiral, forest stores are now seeing the evaporation of their primary income source. A forest store manager lamented, "Selling cars today, far from being profitable, is now causing losses. We have to meet the targets set by auto manufacturers just to break even. Some slow-moving quota-hogging models are tying up a large chunk of our working capital." Statistical data paints a grim picture. The stock warning index of Chinese car dealers spiked at alarming 66.4 percent in April 2023. By the end of May, national passenger car inventory hit a record high of 3.39 million units, 
comprising 770,000 units of manufacturer inventory and 2.62 million units held by 4S stores. This added pressure and amplified the challenges faced by the 4S stores. A snapshot of the current circumstances can be seen in a 4S parking lot in Changsha City. A barren plot of demolished land serves as a cheap parking for 4S stores. Its surface is covered in yellow mud and sand, with no perimeter fencing, gatekeepers or security. Hundreds of new vehicles are left in plain sight, the lot being a shared facility for several 4S stores housing brands such as Skoda, Cadillac, Guangzhou Honda, Land Rover, Volkswagen and Lexus. In the face of a backlog of unsold vehicles, 4S auto dealerships have been forced to employ a range of inventive strategies. An initial step has often been to direct these vehicles towards the second-hand car market, notably those with a mere few hundred kilometers on their clocks. Marketed under the guise of a nearly new or bargain vehicles, these cars are essentially nothing more than residual stock they're striving to clear. A secondary approach sees these dealerships offering their employees, friends and relatives, and even fans of various media outlets and influencers these stock vehicles at preferential rates. Some even resort to launching a media price to attract purchases. Nevertheless, when these tactics fall short in the battle to reduce stock, auctioning often comes into play. It's not uncommon for these cars to be taken to pawn shops for auctioning with asking prices substantially lower than the original. Indeed, a vehicle with a previous price tag of 200,000 yuan could potentially be acquired for a mere 140,000 yuan. When the array of tactics fails, some dealerships are left with no choice but to dismantle the vehicles, whilst the individual component often command a higher price than the intact vehicle. This is an avenue reluctantly taken due to the additional taxation and delayed cash flow associated with selling to vehicle salvage yards. Therefore, when 4S dealerships seek to liquidate these stock vehicles, their selling prices fall considerably below the market rates, barely matching the wholesale price. Statistics reflect the bleak reality of their situation. 68% of dealerships confirmed their primary vehicle models are priced below manufacturers' wholesale rates whilst a significant 73% acknowledged only 20% of their new car sales yield any profit margin. A mere 10% of 4S dealerships can boast that half of their transactions are profitable. In the grand scheme, the sale of vehicles merely break even with the 30% rebate supplied by dealerships, and profit margins are non-existent. Rather, their true profitability lies in customer attraction, maintenance, and insurance services. Interestingly, the forest dealership's performance in these areas have also fallen short, resulting in a significant loss of potential business. A notorious point is the over-maintenance, a stereotype that's become somewhat of a 4S hallmark. As the adage goes, if a 4S store does not over-maintain, then it is not a 4S store. For instance, it is commonplace for forest automotive dealerships after a vehicle has clocked 20,000 kilometers to advise owners to consider cleaning the throttle body. Dealers warn of potential complications, unattended carbon deposits could accumulate and result in engine blockage, requiring a high cost replacement of the three-way catalytic converter. Consequently, scared by the prospective expenditure, car owners usually opt to spend 200 yuan on throttle body cleaning. However, in reality, a cleaning intervention is only required when the throttle is veritably obstructed rather than mandatory cleaning every 20,000 kilometers. In some instances, a minor switch replacement can resolve a significant system issue. However, it is not unheard of for forest stores to exaggerate the predicament, turning what should be a nominal 5 yuan repair into an exorbitant 5,000 yuan fix. We acknowledge that a business model solely dependent on addressing these minor 5 yuan issues would struggle to maintain operations. However, consumer trust must be preserved. Misleading conduct is never justified. 
Modern consumers empowered by access to the internet are increasingly vigilant. Knowledge about vehicles was once limited. They can now readily find answers online in the face of vehicle malfunctions. Consequently, forest stores with their reputation for excessive maintenance and high price repairs run the risk of alienating customers. Unfortunately, the pricing strategy of forest stores often stand in stark contrast with market rates. Maintenance and parts prices are often quoted at three to four times the average market price. Once vehicles move out of warranty, many consumers prefer alternative repair outlets. Some independent maintenance platforms have seen their tier sales outpace all forest stores combined, attributable to their competitive pricing and promotional campaigns. Take for instance the Guangchen Luxury Car Specialist Store in Shanghai's Putuo District. According to its owner, their main competitors are forest stores specializing in luxury cars. They often service at a mere 60 to 70 percent of forest store prices, thus maintaining a steady influx of customers throughout the year. Forest stores stipulation that quality assurance cannot be guaranteed if maintenance isn't performed in their stores has been met with considerable consumer disdain. Such a policy, effective during the warranty period, compels car owners to remain loyal to forest stores for maintenance and repairs. The automotive industry landscape, however, is undergoing significant changes. Traditional forest stores are confronted with the rise of new energy vehicles, gradually eating away at the market share of fuel vehicles. According to the message released by the China Passenger Car Association on June 5th, it is estimated that the sales volume of new energy passenger vehicles in China will reach 8.5 million units in 2023 and the sales volume of narrowly defined passenger vehicles will be 23.5 million units. The penetration rate of new energy vehicles is expected to reach as high as 36% this year. Interestingly, mainstream new energy vehicle brands typically bypass the forest stores. Apart from a few like BYD, most prefer a direct sales model. Tesla was an early adopter of this model, setting up service centers in cities and sales experience stores in shopping centers. Consumers are free to purchase directly from the official website, with prices remaining consistent regardless of car loans or insurance options. For repairs or maintenance, consumers can freely choose reputable independent repair shops bypassing forest stores. This sales model, gaining popularity among consumers, is seen as a way to avoid price manipulation. However, it is further contributing to dwindling revenues for forest stores. Fuel vehicles companies acknowledging this trend are now contemplating the prospect of franchise dealerships. This shift, however, implies that manufacturers would need to bear the burden of inventory pressures and sales cost, thereby limiting dealers' pricing flexibility. For example, a BYD forest store in Shanghai caught offering customer a discount faced a penalty of 1.5 million yuan following a report to the authorities. Consequently, this sale strategy often falls short of generating sufficient profit due to inadequate sales volume. Furthermore, after sales, maintenance costs of new energy vehicles are significantly lower than traditional fuel vehicles. Such vehicles usually require maintenance only once every 20,000 kilometers or annually, costing a few hundred yuan each time. As such, new energy vehicle manufacturers often collaborate with local car care chain platforms for basic inspections, reducing dependency on traditional forest stores. This paradigm shift involving new energy vehicles bypassing the conventional forest stores model from both sales and maintenance is leading to a further contraction in an already pressured sector. The number of forest stores is predicted to dwindle, with second-tier forest stores in 2023 potentially facing an increased risk of closure as new energy vehicle sales continue to grow. China's automotive market is experiencing a significant historical transition. As fuel-powered vehicles are continuously being challenged by new energy vehicles, the traditional network of forest stores, which relies on the sales of fuel cars, is gradually shrinking. On this pivot point, 16 major automakers attempted to maintain a stable market environment by collectively signing a commitment to fair competition in the automotive industry on July 6. 
This agreement aimed to prevent excessive price competition and maintain stable asset price. However, car manufacturers like Tesla and Volkswagen Shanghai broke this agreement the very next day by implementing price reduction strategies to attract consumers. While such price cutting could affect their profits in the short term, it might in the long run help them secure a larger market share and higher returns in the future. Confronted with price reduction from these two car manufacturers, other automakers bound by the agreement find themselves in a difficult situation. They might also wish to reduce prices to maintain market share, but do not want to face litigations for breaching the agreement. To resolve this conflict, the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers ultimately chose to revoke this pricing agreement on July 8th, citing it as a violation of the anti-monopoly law. This series of events not only reflects deep-rooted issues in the auto market, but also reveals a part of China, and indeed the global economic transition. Traditional sales and service models are being challenged by new business models, and the burst of asset bubbles could trigger larger economic impacts. In such an environment, how the Automobile Association initiated this agreement and how BYD included Tesla in the agreement became crucial elements of this historical moment, revealing the strategies and considerations of all parties in responding to market changes. Of course, with the bursting of China's asset bubble, automotive assets, unlike real estate, which can maintain its value, must inevitably be devalued. Moreover, the sales of fuel-powered cars are decreasing year by year, which will lead to a significant reduction in the number of 4S stores dependent on the sales of these vehicles.